Sauron has levied his legions and have decided to meet the forces of good on the open field to destroy them once and for all. Hey, how's it going, guys? My name is Jackie Fish, and welcome back to some more Total War Rise of Mordor. Today, we have another epic one verse one on, oh, sorry, one verse one. It's a three verse three online battle we have three factions from the forces of good and then three forces from the factions of evil setting up for the forces of evil we do have mordor obviously on this right hand side in the center we have an army from the east and that is the easterlings and then obviously on the extreme left we do have an army here from dunland so they've come a long way to meet gondor and their allies over on the other side we have the men of rohan riding into battle as they gloriously do and a lot of knights of the mark on this flank you always know it's going to be a half match when you see these guys stacked on top of each other in the center obviously we have more of the erling retainers for rohan and a ton of our infantry uh, the central player we obviously have another rohan player so there's actually two rohan and one gondor and again you can see a lot of these erling retainers being brought but obviously the majority of the rohan's money is being spent in here on this cavalry i say that though this is this is a cheap cavalry force of rohan which is really interesting. That actually kind of works out. If you're if you're one of the central players, you don't have to go. You're playing more of a support role. So yeah, kind of you know investing a lot of your cavalry over on this side, I and mean, then you kind of maybe go a bit harder on the melee infantry is not a bad idea. Then in the center, we obviously have the men of Gondor looking glorious. Lots of Gondorian sword infantry on the front line behind them, Gondorian archers, and also a couple unit of fountain guard. And we also have some Pelagir marines. These are the javelin skirmishers who can you know, do some serious damage to front lines and then we also have some cavalry that are currently moving around knights of the silver swan so extremely expensive cavalry forces for the forces of good and it's going to be interesting to see how the melee line does suffer because i imagine forces of evil have spent a lot more money on that infantry which will be able to you can already start to see like their battle line just completely overruns them if they can envelop this infantry line like so is going to be a hard matchup but obviously this cavalry is super strong and we'll have to see the evil factions kind of do struggle when it comes to the cavalry fight i feel like the force of good generally have better cavalry obviously there are still some exceptions right there the servants of the eye being one of them absolutely spectacular unit of cavalry and also bane of the step for the eastlings as well is really good i mean again you know we do also have some good ones in like harad as well so they're not like heavily out much but match but i do think they are are, you know slightly outmatched compared to the good forces with rohan with you know this gondorian swan knights even with some of the elven cavalry as well is great and here we go the first little engagement it does seem like the knights of the silver swan are going to be getting caught off guard by the eastling lancers right there being able to get a nice little smash off into them and also harass them with missiles but one of the most important things about this cavalry engagement isn't that you know they managed to get the charge off because but this one likes to do amazing in melee combat they're really really strong when they get uh, plucked down it's the fact that this unit of uh, pikes is gonna be able to reinforce this battle way before Gondor can get anyone else in here so the fact that this cavalry fight is happening here is amazing especially when this is like what one of the only yeah there's only a couple units of cavalry over on this flank so yeah these uh these pikes need to get their asses in I think right now they are fighting these entities so they're not all the way in but yeah really getting on these guys I mean if the Knights of the Silver Swan decide to try and retreat you hammer them with volley after volley after volley and really, really do bring them down because, yeah, the, the amount of missile fire you can stick on these guys as they pull back is just huge. The Knights of the Source 1 are going to be pulling out now, but as you can see, they did lose a lot of these horses, and that's going to make their next charge just a little bit weaker. Uh, and again, you know, I mean, honestly, they didn't lose that many. That's just how good the Knights of the Silver Swan are. But still, going down to however many numbers you go down to, it is still going to be temperamental. You know, losing 10 horses is still a big problem. Now we have some Archer Fire as well here as the Gondorian Archers start to unleash hell i imagine their main focus is definitely going to be on them uh, on them easterling pikemen right there and they're pretty well protected as well from the fountain guards so that's gonna be a nice way you can see the arrow fire just warning these guys off the skirmish is moving up as well uh the skirmishers do need to be kind of careful Ooh, we also have a nice little cavalry charge right there I completely missed that the knights of the silver swan showing their worth here charging into the orcs 
and actually doing some really good damage to them as well. Obviously being, again, some more of them are going to get caught out. This is going to be a deadly strategy. Luckily, though, the Eastern player isn't completely, sorry, the York player isn't completely stupid. He's got his ally coming in and helping him. And again, it's going to be a great charge here from the Eastlings right into the side of an unbraced infantry unit that is going to do some damage. But this entire time, these Knights of the Silver Swan are now starting to take dramatic casualties. As they start to lose numbers, they just drop faster and faster and faster. So that initial engagement, even though it didn't do anything crazy, is actually adding up massively now uh, and you can see this unit is just getting hammered by archer fire the cavalry is now stuck in as well which can chase it uh, and again the infantry is kind of slow to reinforce this we also got a charge here from the Eastlings getting stuck in on the Gondorian infantry. Again, slightly unbraced. Actually, maybe they were. Yeah, I think they were braced. So a nice little play there by the Gondorians. The battle lines, though, have completely clashed since we've been actually looking in onto the Gondorians. As you can see, the arrow fire there from the... Uh, are these the Helm Steep one? Yeah, the Garrisons of the Hornberg. An awesome looking archer unit back there who have now come into battle. And I mean, just baby, look at that battle line. What is not to love watching men of Rohan and the Eastlings clash out the arrow fire going off, Rohirrin in the background charging in. I mean, this is Rise of Mordor, and I'm always super exciting. Also, uh, just something to kind of update you guys on as well with the mod is that they are actually adding in a kind of a, a prelude to that campaign. They're going to be updating the battle tile map, which is actually really, really, way more exciting than it may sound. Uh, they're going to be updating the Attila battle map. So whenever you play a battle in custom battle or online, you can basically click around the, the map, the Middle-earth map that will be in the game, much like you do uh, in the Attila map of Europe. Uh, you can click around and it will actually be locations of, of you know, Middle-earth. So for example, if you fight a battle and you click on somewhere in Mordor, it's going to take you into a, a battlefield that is very Mordor-esque, uh, which is really exciting. Again, same for Rohan. If you click on somewhere to fight in Rohan, that's going to be really exciting because it's going to be, you know, all these rolling hills and, you know, moss land and stuff like that. Same with Gondor. There'll be a lot of planes and so on and so on so they're getting in that battle tile map now obviously it's going to be updated more maps are going to be added to it but what's going to be really exciting is that really sets up the campaign to actually work. You know, obviously you're going to need that when they release the campaign map and, you know, add in all that stuff. So, yeah, it's a great kind of step in the right direction. It's good to see progress constantly being made. And obviously I'll bring you guys news whenever you guys want to see it. So right now, sorry, back to the battle. The battle is evolving very quickly. As you can see, then that number advantage is really playing out. However, you know, Mordor are kind of struggling to wrap this around. Obviously they want to be kind of careful. They're under constant harassment from these Knights of Asyl. Silver Swan getting another charge off. The Mordorian Orcs are a little bit denser, so you can see that charge was a lot less effective. And again, they'll start to chip away at these guys as they pull out. But just such a scary unit. You really need like a unit just to come flying, like your cavalry unit to come flying through and catch this guy. Uh, oh my god, that, that Orc got some absolutely flying. You did good. You did good, my friend. Because he just stares up lifeless. Very brutal indeed. But yeah, you kind of need this cavalry to kind of cut you off or kind of come flying through. And that's a great way of minimizing the forces. However, the rest of the Knights of the Silver Swan are pinned down now. It's going to be one unit completely taken care of. Over in the central battle line, my god, Rohan have just got deep in the enemy lines. Getting a great charge off here on the Warlords of Rune. Again, one of the stronger shock infantry in the game. Able to get a nice little cavalry charge off there. And again, these, these riders of Rohan are a, kind of a cheap throwaway unit. Uh, they've been upgraded to being golden chevrons, which is nice. But even with that money investment... Definitely getting stuck in here and just doing some serious damage to the Warlords of Rune is great. Another nice little cavalry charge right here. Right into the back and kind of around the flanks. Going to get a nice little envelopment here. Really start to hinder the morale. And right now, the forces of evil are struggling to deal with this. And here we go. Is this Feodin? Yeah, this is Feodin. Or it could be Feodrid about to get a perfect rear charge here into the men of Dunland. Revenge for all them cities that have been raided. I mean, look at that. The cavalry going flying in. Beautiful stuff. Yeah, I think this is Prince Feodred uh, right here in his unit. Uh, yeah, it is indeed. So he's getting some good revenge here on the orcs. And you can just see that unit really going hard onto the men and done. They're even going to be able to like really do some serious damage. And there's a unit of Blood Avengers here as well. If they can break that... They're going to need to because, again, Rohan will struggle massively when it comes to fighting them on foot. Rohan just will not be able to do it. The Blood Avengers, the, the heavier infantry, they'll just struggle. Because, again, Rohan have very... I think they don't have a single unit of shock infantry. That's just not their thing. 
So fighting a faction like Dunland, who do have a lot of shock infantry, their Blood Avengers are absolutely brutal, is going to be a very, very hard fight indeed. I also, one of the things I really like about Dunland is all like their kind of borrowed equipment from Isengard as well. Saruman just literally funding this war against Rohan. Preparing to take advantage and launch his assault. In the center, we do have a pretty clumped up fight here again as Rohan fight up against the Easterlings. Once again, we're going to be doing okay, but they need that cavalry support to come in if they have any hope in winning this battle. Any hope indeed. The cavalry moving around though, nice. It's kind of crazy how these servants of the eye have managed to make their way in. However, these knights of the silver swan who are still operational, how the hell are they still causing such so much of an issue? Managed to get a good charge off. However, at this point, these servants of the eye will cut them down. I was about to say cut them down, but they're getting wrecked right now. They lost like 15 horses there. Yes, we're under a bit of missile fire, but my god that was uh, not a good exchange right there i did not realize knights of the silver swan did so good now the the servants of the eye will, will win this battle just because of their sheer power in that melee engagement but i guess the knights of the silver swan do have a very good kind of charge as well so not a surprise whatsoever did you say our allies are running oh yeah dunland are breaking right now oh no that's not good that's not good at all as the uh, forces come flying through that is shaky. Yeah, Dunland are being absolutely ripped apart. I mean, granted, there are some uh, some infantry over on this side coming around and breaking up quite nicely. But yeah, that is shaky. The men of Rohan coming around as well. Um, and yeah, trying to reform this line. They still have a lot of archers. And again, these are Dunherd archers. So uh, not the most expensive ones, but still proud of these are the most expensive ones. So some decent archers who can also get stuck in melee. Able to volley off some arrows as well. Obviously going to be trying to focus down the generals and any other anyone else. And they still have their general unit left as well. More cavalry fighting over on this side as the Bane of the Step clash in against the Knights of the Mark. This is a match for a you know for the history books right here. Probably some of the best cavalry fighting down the bane of the step i think i'm not sure if they still are uh, guys let me know in the comments down below but they definitely were back in the day the best melee cavalry in the game just super tanky and able to withstand pretty much anything even when they got like a bad charge they could still quite dramatically take down their foes with a very very low difficulty so let's get a nice little overview of the battlefield now see how things are looking for both sides so over on the forces of evil their center is actually breaking up i mean that was under a lot of pressure but you are starting to see the men of rohan in the center doing a decent job at breaking through here the cavalry have also done a great job out there able to surround that unit and now there is a lot of horses that now can come back but there's no infantry for rohan whatsoever like we said they would really really struggle in this infantry department and fighting against you know guards of the hall very very good uh, Spear cavalry, uh, sorry, spear infantry unit, but fighting Blood Avengers, you're not going to do much. And this unit is up to 144 kills now, which is really impressive against a good guy faction like Rohan, who have kind of the, uh, you know, not massive units, only 120 men. So they've killed over a, a unit right there. They are paying for themselves right now. And, you know, all whilst this is happening, they're continuing to move in. Over on the far right hand side, we are seeing King Feodim making his way over on this flank and really supporting with the Knights of the Silver Swan, just hammering and anviling into this poor poor uh mordor player but the mordor player does have the witch king at his core is the witch king dead i can't see him i mean the witch king cannot die there he is you can see him right there charging in once again see if we can have a little close above him fighting looking absolutely amazing it's great that we are starting to get some named characters in the mod now, we have obviously Feodim, Feodrid, Aemir's in the mod. Uh, we got the Witch Kings. There's also a, 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 obviously the Nazgul. But there's also a... Oh, one of the generals actually did go down as well whilst we were there. Did the uh, Gondorian general? No, it looks like the Bane of the Step general went down. Oh, that is not good at all. That's going to allow Rohan to at least move their cavalry round. But yeah, we also have another named Nazgul as well. I can't remember exactly his name. It's like Kamal something maybe. Um, and he fights with Dol Guldur. And he's equipped with some like big old ram face and he looks awesome. We have Dane Ironfoot as well for the dwarves. So it's great we're starting to see a lot of these characters with their own like special units in. Really adds a lot of life and flavor to the mod itself. Very nice indeed. 
So, so far, the battle is looking, uh, yeah, very, very shaky. The forces of Goomba kind of getting cleared up everywhere. They still have this cavalry left, um, which is, you know, going in. And the center has gone bad uh, for the forces of evil. The Gondorian's able to use that real good strength against them. However, once again, they are fighting a very scary unit. The guards of the teeth, even though they are getting a bit enveloped, are able to really utilize their halberds and their just their, their quality. Some of the best trained Black Numenorians. At least I think, are they Black Numenorians? No. Maybe not. Either way, they're an extreme. Obviously, they're the, the, the mouth of Sauron's private guard. Is that Gondorian gets taken down right there. Finished off brutal. Another Gondorian going down. And yeah, these guys are going to be able to fight fairly effectively from the front. Actually able to break that unit of Gondorian swords. And now just fighting a unit of uh, archers. Going to be helping out. However, uh, more cavalry coming around and Gondor are finding their roots. They obviously really need to try and pin down this general unit if they can. So that's where we should go. Does also seem like this unit of Knights of the Mark is probably going to go into the back of these guys. A nice little outflanking there. This battle is going to go down to the wire right now. Bounce of power looking very, very even. And um, the cavalry is just coming off here, trying to you know, break away. I think killing like army attrition is going to be a big, big thing in this battle. There we go, another charge coming in. This is Feodin. Nice little charge there. Obviously, immediately countercharged by the Witch King and his other servants of the eye. And yeah, I think this is going to be it for Feodin. There is no way out really for him. He has been swamped. And this is just what's so, is so good about Mordor is their ability just to pin down. Look at that. Immediately, Feodin just gets surrounded. And just like in Belenor Fields, Ferdinand is going to find his end. More cavalry coming in, but I think this is a lost cause right now. You're just trying to slow down the enemy as much as you can. You've another unit of Gondorians moving up, and you really need all the help you can get. You also have uh, Dunland, you know, actually winning their battle. I mean, able, they were able to take care of a lot of that cavalry. And you've also got archers here shooting directly into the back of the Rohirrim. She's going to whittle them down. And yeah, almost breaking. So I think... I think Gondor are not going to be victorious here. I mean, they're a big route coming over here as well. If they can get this infantry to bog down these guys, I think they were just literally a couple seconds too late. If they could have bogged these guys down with the Knights of the Mark surviving, that would have been huge. But now this cavalry can kind of dissipate here, reform their battle lines, and then just start hammering and anviling. Yeah, and even though they are able to break their unit of infantry, this cavalry roaming back is going to be super scary. But realistically, all this cavalry needs to do is buy enough time. A beautiful cavalry there just wiping out the men of Rohan. Uh, that was not good for them. Able to trample down on a few of the fallen Rohirrim. They're going to get back up, but still not able to do much. And they'll be breaking very, very soon. Uh, there's a couple units of the, uh, of the spearmen. I assume these are spears of the Golden Hall. Are indeed, but they are they're, they're meeting Blood Avengers in battle. So Evil is going to take victory this time in a very, very strong fashion. Also want to go ahead and give a big shout out to the guys who sent this battle. We don't really appreciate the battle replays. And again, if anybody wants to start up a new battle scenario, you know, maybe like four or five parts of battles leading on from one another, definitely do not hesitate to get a group together. We are still waiting on that battle uh, to finish the the, um, the the Frandral battle with the elves. Uh, unfortunately, that battle still hasn't been sent to me, but as soon as it does, as soon as they find time again, obviously, you know, it's not like they have to do the battle for me, but if they do decide to, I'll give up on the channel for you guys and I try and end that scenario. Then battles were really, really epic, so hopefully we do see a, a kind of a, a final part of that battle uh, as we are seeing the final parts of this battle as the men of Gondor set up their final stand. I mean, there is not much they can really do here. Uh, I mean, unless there's a big mass route, but obviously as soon as they get stuck in, this cavalry is coming in and charging in as well. Unfortunately, these Gondorians are here to be taken down, even utilizing some of their arrows as well. There is just no hope left for the, the strength of men. Yeah, the arrow fire. Just utilizing every... I mean, they still actually have a lot of arrows left. Just utilizing that. Not that they really have to. They've got Blood Avengers here. The cavalry coming in. And an epic last stand indeed. 
Cavalry coming in from every single side as they attempt to make that stand. Actually, like a little route for them to, to escape right now, but I don't think it is going to be enough to save them. Servants of the Eye back there, supported by the men of Dunland. Cavalry roaming around, picking off the Gondorians. And there you go. A Pyrrhic victory indeed. That was an extremely close battle. Um, but unfortunately, Dunland having that many men left with their aggressive... You know, people underestimate, uh, underestimate the strength of Dunland's infantry. And it can really surprise people. Especially if then Blood Avengers can get in untouched. They will tear factions like Rohan apart. Because they just have no way of really countering it. Unless with their cavalry. So this was a really fun match. Again, you guys can take a look at the kills right there. The Witch King of 136. And also some 7 to the eye. Look at that. Blood Avengers. 300 kills. 300 kills. And it's not like these are just kills on Orcs. Which have, you know, 200 man units. These are on you fairly elite men who only have 100 to 120 so pretty impressive indeed we also have the Eastings as well holding up their end of the bargain over on the other side obviously you know, guards of golden hall 120 kills not bad some decent kills there on the cavalry gondor's infantry oh my god 541 kills the swan knights as well uh really pulling their weight and you can also see some of the archers doing a decent job as well so hopefully you guys enjoyed this battle if you did Make sure you drop a like and a comment down below. Let me know what type of scenarios you want to see next on the channel in regards to Rise of Mordor or even Bannerlord. And I'll see you guys in the next one.